just want to open up in prayer uh, just to set the atmosphere, and we're going to jump into the Word. So let's pray. Are we pray with me? Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here in this house. Lord, we thank you, Lord. I ask you to prepare the hearts, prepare the minds, prepare the ears to receive, Lord, everything you want to do on the inside of their lives, Lord God. I pray that people will walk out of this place different than the way they walked in. I pray, Holy Spirit, that your Word would challenge them and convict them to be more like you. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would baptize them in your Spirit and give them power throughout this week, Lord, to walk in holiness, to walk in purity and to live everything out that you've called them to live, Lord. I give this service over to you, Holy Spirit. Let them hear your words and not my words today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. 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 Cool. Hey, so I'm, I'm, I'm Pastor Dez, and man, me, I tend to have a lot of energy, so I just want to warn y'all, all right? I, I, you know, I, I'm going to get fired up in the Holy Ghost, and I'm just going to be myself today, and I'm going to let the Holy Spirit use me and speak to you guys today, because I believe the Lord has a word. So get ready. The Lord wants to speak to you today. Today, the subject and the topic we're talking about is a very, very difficult topic to talk about in the church. It's not always received well, but I want to challenge you to have an open mind and an open heart, because the Lord wants to minister to you today. Amen? You believe that? Amen? All right. So today, we're going to be talking about the topic Judging others, right? Do not judge the topic of my sermon today, of my message. And we're going to be talking about is there a right way to judge and is there a wrong way to judge? Because why are we talking about this today? We live in a world that says either believers and non-believers have said this. Do not judge me. How many of you have heard people say that? Do not judge me. You have no right to judge me. And what it is is a defense mechanism to say you can't tell me what's right or wrong with my life. You can't tell me how I'm supposed to live. And it's this, this, what our culture is, is trying to put this tolerance and acceptance model out there to say, hey, I'm free to do whatever I want. I'm free to live however I want. And you cannot judge me. Who are you that have the right to judge me? That's the culture we're living in. We're living in a culture that people say evil is good and good is evil. We're living in a culture today where people, they, they define their own morality outside of the word of God. It's the culture that we're living in, church, and we have to wake up because a lot of times Christians are buying into this blanket statement that we're never supposed to make judgments. Well, today I'm going to show you through the scriptures and give you the truth on what the Bible really has to say about judging others. Amen. Are you all with me this morning? Are you all awake? Because we're going somewhere, all right? So let me set this up. If you have your Bibles, flip to Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. Go ahead and get there with me. I'm in the New King James Version. And so today I want to give a little context to set up our, our message for today, all right? So in Matthew, and at that point, this is Jesus teaching on the Sermon on the Mount. And so what Jesus is doing, he's teaching his disciples on what true righteousness looks like according to the kingdom in contrast to the righteousness of the Pharisees. See, the righteousness of the Pharisees, they would do everything for show. They would do everything to be seen. And their righteousness, their hearts were far away from God. And so Jesus was teaching his disciples, he hit on topics like prayer, he hit on topics like fasting to say, don't pray like them, don't fast like them, because their righteousness is to be done before men. Their hearts are away from me. Their hearts are not pure, and their motives are not pure. That is some of the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount. And when we get to Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5, now Jesus is dealing with the issue of judging others in the context of don't follow the Pharisees and how they judge others. Are you ready with me? Let's go there. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. It says this, it says, judge not that you will not be judged. For with what judgment, <clears throat> yeah, you will be judged. With the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Verse 3, and why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but you do not consider the plank in your own eye? Verse 4, or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Verse 5, hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So Matthew 7, 1 is the most misquoted Bible verse throughout Scripture. It's taken out of context. People take verse 1 and says, judge not, least do not be judged, as a defense mechanism for you to approve their lifestyle of sin. That's what it is. It's a defense mechanism that says, I am free to live how I want. I can be gay. I can be homosexual. I could do all these things, and you have no right to judge me. But they're taking it out of context because what Jesus was actually teaching was he was condemning hypocritical, self-righteous type of judgment. He was condemning a certain type of judgment, not all forms of judgment. And he was saying, don't follow the Pharisees because they're hypocritical, they're self-righteous, and they're condemning in their judgment. So what does that mean? That means that they're quick to point out other people's flaws but not examine their own. 
That means that they're quick to judge people and like they're, like they're better than everybody else to belittle somebody else. That hypocrite means they put these religious demands upon people, but guess what? They don't practice those demands that they expect from other people. That's what hypocritical judgment is. That's what self-righteous judgment is. And Jesus in this passage is not saying we're supposed to never judge. He's saying don't judge hypocritically. He's saying don't judge self-righteously. And he's saying don't do that in that way because he says you are not operating in true righteousness. Because the Pharisees were always condemning people like they were better. They were always putting people down like they were the greatest in the world. And we have to get this today. Guess what? He didn't say, at the end, he says, what are they supposed to do? He uses an analogy and a hyperbole of a plank and a speck. And what was the meaning behind that? Jesus was saying that how can you help your brother get the sin out of their own life when you have a log that you haven't dealt with? How can you help them come to righteousness and when you haven't dealt with your own sins? That's what he was teaching. He was saying you're supposed to judge your own actions, judge your own life before you go call out somebody else. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's what the word teaches. It's not saying we're never supposed to make judgments, but us as Christians, we've allowed fear of confrontation, fear of persecution, fear of being uncomfortable to say what needs to be said in the culture. As long as we be quiet, the culture will define what morality is, what's right or wrong, and the church will lose its voice. The church will lose its voice. We have to get this right, church, because guess what? If we keep being quiet and we keep backing off of the tough issues and don't speak out when the Bible says it's right or wrong, guess what's going to happen? The culture and evil will continue to triumph and the church will lose its power and its influence. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? And so what Jesus is teaching, let me give you some more scriptures. Later on in the same passage of Matthew chapter 7, Jesus is calling his disciples to beware of false prophets. They come in sheep's clothes, but they're like ravenous wolves. And what did he say? You identify them by their fruits. That means by their actions. That means uh, by their teachings. And guess what that means? That means you have to make a judgment call. You have to make a judgment call and discern what's evil and what's wrong. You have to make a judgment call on what's right or wrong. Are they a true prophet or a false prophet? You judge it by their actions and you judge it by their teachings. Does it line up with the word of God or what the word of God says is a true prophet of God? So scripture does not, for it forbids, certain type of judgment. There's a wrong way to judge and a right way to judge that the scripture sees. Let me give you some more scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Let me give you some background. The church of Corinth in that day was struggling with different type of sins. They were struggling with divisions amongst who they were going to follow. The church of Corinth was struggling with sexual morality and prostitution. And all these different things were going on in that culture that the church of Corinth, the believers, were participating in. So by the time we get to chapter 5, guess what happens? The apostle Paul is angry at the church. Why is the Apostle Paul angry at the church? Because the church was allowing sexual sin to just run rampant in the church and they weren't correcting the issue and making a judgment call on that sinful behavior. And so guess what happens? By the time we get to verse 12, Paul says, it's your job, believers, to judge those who are sinning inside the church. That means you're supposed to bring to church discipline. That means you're supposed to correct someone when they're in error. Amen. But us, we're too afraid to offend. We want to sugarcoat the message. And that right there is deceiving people. And people are going to hell because we're not giving them the truth of the whole word of God. We want the Barney and Sesame Street Jesus, but not the Lion and Triumph of Judah. Because guess what? He is loving. He is kind. But there's a type of Jesus that doesn't tolerate sin. There's a type of Jesus that he corrected the people when he flipped the tables because they turned the house of prayer. And guess what? Into a marketplace. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? There's a character of Jesus that, yes, he is loving. He's full of grace. But he, he hates sin. He hates evil. He does make judgments. He would always call the hypocrites, the Pharisees, you blind guides, you brood of vipers, you hypocrites. He was always making judgments towards people's sinful behavior. Are you picking up what I'm putting down this morning? That's where the church has to be more bold in because you're going to have people at your job. You're going to have relationships with people that they're doing things they shouldn't be doing. And you can't give into this, oh, I can't judge them in the name of tolerance, in the name of acceptance. Because right there, you're doing them a disservice. You're doing them a disservice. Because if you really cared about them, you're going to share the truth in love. And you're going to fake that judgment by the word of God, not by your preferences, not by your opinions, and not what you think is right, but what the word of God says is right or wrong. Are you picking up with me? That's the type of church that has to be violent and has to be aggressive against the enemy and has to put the devil in his place. Not a church that's passive and say, oh, I might offend them. Let me not say anything. Are you, going, are you, are you picking up where I'm going today? All right, let's continue. Sweating too much. Let me get a little water. 
Mm. Holy Ghost, have your way in this place. Let's continue where I'm at. All right. John chapter 7, verse 24. Let me give you some more scripture. I love, I love the Bible, and I want to make sure I'm going there. John chapter 7, verse 24. Guess what happens? Jesus calls out the religious leaders of that day. Why does he call out the religious leaders of that day? Because they were judging people superficially and judging them by their outward appearance. But Jesus said, right in that same verse, he says, guess what? You're supposed to judge righteously. Guess what? Even Jesus, the Son of Man, is supposed to say, we're making right judgments. How do we make right judgments? Let me give you an example. You base your judgments on what the Word of God says is right or wrong, right? How do you make right judgments? You, like Matthew 7 says, before you quick to point out other people's flaws, you examine your own life, you look in your own walk and say, man, if I'm going to call you to a standard that I'm living, I better be practicing the same things. I better be making sure I'm walking in integrity and holiness and obedience to the Lord if I'm going to challenge you to walk in the same things. Are you hearing what I'm saying, church? That is the right type of judgment. It's humility. The motives is if I'm going to make a judgment call on my friend, I'm going because I want to help them. I want to get them back on a path of righteousness. I want to make sure that I'm stirring them up to holiness. And I'm not coming here like I'm better than them. I'm coming here because I want to see them thrive in Jesus. I want to see them thrive in Jesus. And it calls for us at times to have those tough conversations we don't want to have. But testimony of that, this past week I had to meet with a gentleman about some things, and he was wanting my opinion, my advice. I said, I, my opinion don't matter. It's what the Word has to say about the situation. And so I started to walk him through the Bible step by step, and I said, man, this is not right in the eyes of God. I love you. I wasn't beating him over the head. I wasn't trying to say I'm here to argue and debate with you. But in love, I said, let me give you a little correction, man. This is not okay. And I care enough about you, even if you get offended, even if you don't want to talk to anymore, to tell you the truth in love because I want to see you get back on the right path with Jesus. And I'm so proud of that young man because guess what happened to him? He received it so humbly and he's already taken steps back onto the right path with God. We have to be those type of Christians. We have to be those type of men and women of God that we have a brother that's struggling. Galatians 6, 1 says that when a brother is overcome by sin, you are to gently and humbly bring that person back onto the right path. So how we go about our judgments? We go humbly and gently. We examine our own lives. We make sure that our stuff's together. I'm not saying you have to be perfect. Our own stuff's together. And then we make that judgment and say, man, this is not okay for you to live this way. This is not right. Let me help you, man. See, the goal of being judgmental is you're looking to belittle, you're looking to badmouth, you're looking to put down and elevate yourself to put somebody else down. The goal of righteous judgment is I'm going to make sure my judgments line up with the Word of God. My motivation is to build them up. My motivation is to help them get back on the right path with Christ. It's all about motives. Jesus was just teaching us that. Right? Do y'all get what I'm saying? But that's what we got to get today. <clears throat> Woo! Come on, Holy Ghost. Keep going. Um, <clears throat> another testimony. So, I ha- so by the way, I, I, I not only do I work here, which is a privilege, it's a blessing, but uh, also temporarily, I, I'm a mailman. Just in case y'all don't know, yay! All right, that's, a, that's, what, that's my side hustle. I, del- I deliver mail from time to time. But, but I, I got to share this because it fits with what we're talking about today, all right? So, basically, there was a, a situation on my job. I was late for some deliveries, all right? And so, my boss was like, well... I just need you to lie to the customer and tell the customer that this is why the package was late. And a righteous anger just came up on the inside of me. But I prayed in the Holy Ghost because I was like, I'm going to confront this in love, but I'm going to speak the truth and I'm going to be a man of integrity. And so what happened was I met with my boss and I said, hey, look, I love you. I appreciate you, but this is not okay for me to do. And she was upset. And I wasn't rude. I wasn't like, like fighting with her. But I said, the Bible says that lying is a sin, and I'm going to make a righteous judgment call by the Word of God. You may believe differently because she's a non-believer. She is, and she's going to get saved. But that's a perfect example. Every day you're in situations, you're going to run into people that's going to challenge your faith. They're going to say, what do you believe about homosexuality? Do you believe it's okay for a man to call himself a woman? Do you believe it's okay to have sex out of marriage? You're going to run into these issues, church. What I'm challenging you to do is make righteous judgments according to the word of God. And don't sugarcoat the message. Don't sugarcoat it anymore. Be bold and be in love and say, hey, I care. I don't want you to spend eternity separated from God. So I'm going to tell you what you don't want to hear. I'm going to love you enough to bring it to higher ground. I'm going to love you enough to drag you out the mud. Amen? Come on. If you got a friend that's about to run off a cliff, you're not going to just say, oh, see you later. Bye-bye. You're going to say, danger, danger, danger if they're about to run off the cliff. Why? Because you care. Let compassion swallow your fears. 
of making right judgments. Let compassion swallow your fears of confronting, of, of getting uncomfortable and dealing with the culture of the day and the people you deal with. Let compassion swallow your fears. You, are, are y'all awake this morning? I'm picking up one. All right, awesome. Let's continue. I'm almost getting close. All right. Um, so how do we live out this message of Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5, all right? How do we live this out in our lives, all right? Some of us in here, we got to work. The church has to work on this. That's why I'm talking about this today. We got to be better at this. You're on one side of the spectrum. You're either the person that has the pharisaical judgment type spirit, but you're not willing to help somebody. Or maybe you're at the point where you just, man, I don't have no courage or no boldness. There's, I, you know people in your life right now that's not living right. You know people in your life that, and you don't want to address it because you're afraid you might mess up the relationship. They might never want to talk to you again. But I challenge you. I've even had to do this. There's been people in my life, I had to talk to them about some tough things and make some right judgments. And we're not as close anymore. It's not because I went there to argue or debate the scriptures. But I said, man, I love you enough. You may get mad at me. You may get defensive. But I love you enough. But I'm going to tell you what the scripture says because I care about your spiritual well-being. And you may fight me back and, and resist and, and, and say, no, it's because you want to stay in your sin. That's what it is. You want to stay in your sin. That's what it is. We're going to be real today now. So I'm going to be real with you today. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We have to be a people that says we're operating. We're not afraid to make judgment calls that what the word of God says. We can't let fear of man, persecution, what the culture has to say to cause us to stay quiet and hide in our closet. We have to come out and be bold and get a righteous anger. Jesus displayed righteous anger throughout the scriptures without sinning. He was perfect, the Bible says. We have to start to get angry about sin again. Because right now there's the church, there's this seeker-friendly movement that is bringing false converts. This seeker-friendly movement, they're only preaching parts of Jesus and not giving the full counsel, the consequences of hell, the consequences of sin. They're not doing that. And man, they're going to be in big trouble if we don't get it right. I'm not saying we're perfect, but they're going to be in big trouble if we don't get it right. And so this is what we're talking about today. Uh, where's the teaming? Come on up. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. This is what I want to challenge you with. This is your homework assignment. All right? Application. You ready to apply this word to your life? This is the word right here. If you're going to start to make righteous judgments, how do you do it? Number one, before you go ahead and make a judgment towards your brother, you pray, what is my motives? Is my motives to condemn? Is my motives to make an argument? Is my motives to tear them down? Or is my motives to help them get back on the right path? Number two, we're going to follow the scriptures. You're going to examine and judge your own life. And then if, 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 if hey, like, I got more authority to speak to that area in life, then you're going to go to them humbly and gently and bring them to a place of repentance and turn back to God. How else do you make right judgments? You use the word of God as your compass and your guide, not your personal opinions. Because your personal opinions ain't always right. My personal opinions ain't always right. We got to go to the word of God. What does it say whenever we help our brothers to go into the right path? Amen? And the spirit we want to be delivered from. And if you're dealing with that type of spirit, the Lord can deliver you right there. I'm about to turn the service over to the Holy Spirit. If you're dealing with the condemning, uh, pharisaical, and there was a woman that got delivered in the first service, by the way, testimony of Jesus Christ. A woman got delivered for that same spirit. If you're dealing with that, the Lord can deliver you from that today. He can set you free. But the other thing I want to do is the Lord gave this to me as I was working on this message. It's not even in the notes. I believe there's some people in here today that you are, there, there's this, you're going through some really tough circumstances in your life. And there's like this weight of the world that is just pounding on you, pounding on you, pounding on you. And there's a spirit of heaven as the Lord wants to set you free today. And so by the end of this message, if that's you, don't just walk out of here and think about lunch. You have plenty of time. Don't just, hey, what I got to do, do business with God. The altars will be open. People will be here to pray for you. Amen? And so that's my challenge. Would you guys stand up with me? Stand up with me. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I'm going to get the prayer ministers to start making their way to the front of the altar. Why don't you just close your eyes right now? Thank you, Holy Spirit. If that's you today, if you say, man, I know that I've been dealing with some tough trials and circumstances and I feel like I can't get my head above the water, come up to the altar before you leave. We'd love to pray for you, see you get breakthrough today. It can happen. The Holy Spirit's here. Also, if you're dealing with anything in this message, I challenge you to say, Lord, set me free. Whatever side of your spectrum you're on, 
Lord, if I'm dealing with a judgmental spirit towards other people, family members, friends at work, God, deliver me from that. If you're saying, man, you know what, I, I need to be a little bit, have more, a little more courage and start to take a stand for God's word and make righteous judgments whenever I'm supposed to and stand for the word of God and I let the culture cause me to back down, that's you. You can receive boldness today. Amen. But also, if you are in here, because I always want to extend the invitation, if you are in here and you know you're not right with God, you know that you're, the way you're living isn't right, and you're ready to get some things right in your life today, people will be up here to pray with you. Man, the Lord is wanting you to come back home. The, the, the enemy's trying to, to, to make you think that you've too far gone, but you're not too far gone. You haven't uh, fell off too bad. God is waiting for you to come back, sons and daughters, prodigals, in this place. He wants to minister to you. He has a word for you in this place. Amen? Let me pray. And after I pray, you'll be dismissed. But man, come up here and do business with God. The altars are heavy, full of the Spirit, and God wants to speak to you and do a word. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word, God, that is truth. God, we thank you that your word that is powerful is sharpened in two in the edge sword, God. God, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that the church, we need to be better with this issue, God. God, teach us, God, how to stand up for righteousness and make judgments according to the word of God. That we don't just get passive and be on the defense and allow the culture and the enemy to run rampant and destroy our world. But God, we would stand up for your word. We'd stand up for your truth, God, and we would choose to judge righteously in this world, God. God, we would choose to stay away from the judgment, God, that is not of you, the judgment that is hypocritical, the judgment that is self-condemning, the judgment that is self-righteous, Lord God. Teach us, Holy Spirit. Give us a backbone and a boldness and a courage in our jobs and a courage in our schools and a courage in our workplaces, God, to live out this message today. Father, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for your word and what you're doing right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Give Jesus a hand, clap of praise in this house this morning.